Wow. So you, we seen you a lot lately. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We saw you at um, involved in a lot of going on, and I see your your tie. Oh yeah, love that. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I love it. And the mm -hmm. recent passing of Nipsey Hussle. Yes. You were there on the front lines. Yes. And just tell us a little bit about the climate, because you're from Compton. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So Born for raised, yes. for you, I'm sure he meant a lot yes. more than even he meant to some of us that were just you know fans mm -hmm. of his music. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So tell up more about like what he did for the community and what he meant and everything mm -hmm. that's gone on since. I can tell you this: number one, brother Nipsey Hussle was always true to himself. He was mm -hmm. true to the hood that he grew up in. Mm -hmm. He was true to the people. He was true to his family. He was mm -hmm. true to his culture. Being an African from Itatria, as yeah. well right. as a brother in the hood from LA, he was <laughs> yeah. true all the way around. That's number one. He yeah. never folded when it came to people asking him where he was from. Mm -hmm. He was an active gang member, but for the original purpose. Yeah. Once he woke up, right. all right. So people right. they, they yeah. turned it into shooting and all that, but no, no, no. He brought it back to what it was originally for the used for: community yeah. resistance in progress yeah. as a true crip yes. the way Snoop oh, was wow. educating them do it the right, right way yeah. if you uplift in your community you are a true crip if you stop your brothers from killing your brother right. you a true crip if you tell them to stand up to the police you a true crip right. you educating the children you putting them on you you know building businesses you buying land you putting the homies yeah. on who got felonies because you know they can't get a job yes. in the regular world you a true crip right. he was doing that right. he embodied right. that and so we honor our brother we salute him because he was doing a lot of work yeah he was building infrastructure he was investing in multiple companies mm. um, I believe world on wheels he yeah, owned, yeah, I think 50% of that. Uh, he was in, he was encouraging Bitcoin to be used. I remember that. Oh, yeah. Back in 2015, yeah. I saw that video. Yeah. I, I he think was it was studying. in Amsterdam, Amsterdam. Right? Yeah, A on. small city in Amsterdam that ran yeah. completely on Bitcoin. Right. Wow. right. No paper money. Right. That right. is extremely... Now, if anybody knows right. about this <laughs> economic system in America, let me just tell you something. Yeah, it's crumbling. Man, listen. You are talking about America. Currently, America yeah. will tell you that they are in debt a little over $27 trillion. That's Correct. bull crap. America yeah. is a little over $60 trillion wow. in debt. When you add in Medicare, Medicaid, all the bills and wow. debts, et cetera, that they owe to families, that they owe to other countries. By the that's way, amazing. the majority of countries that America talks about happens to be countries that they owe money to. Yeah. Since that's why they talk about them, because they can't give them money, but wow. they can bully them with the right. weapons. Yeah. Okay? Nipsey was encouraging Bitcoin. Wow. And because of that, Bitcoin isn't regulated. Right. It's not owned not by yet, the U.S. Yeah. government. And because wow. of that, you literally can spend it everywhere. <laughs> wow. And so he was encouraging the hood to take on Bitcoin because he wanted to raise his hood to start there in the 60s and have that running on all Bitcoin, mm. which is why he encouraged, I believe he uh, invested in one of the schools there to give a STEM a STEM program with science and technology. Vector 90, right? Yes, Vector 90. Gotcha. And he was encouraging the children to learn about yeah. science, technology, Bitcoin, etc. Wow. He wow. was going to create a small, he was creating a small <laughs> revolution in the hood. Silicon Valley. Quietly. Somewhere. Oh yeah. yeah, bro. He wasn't right. playing. He wasn't playing. <laughs> right, so it was like, right. okay, this nigga's <laughs> he got a beard and all that, and he talking about I don't work for no white crackers in this song dedication. Yeah, on your yeah. masters, on your publishing, they like this nigga Bro, is too damn smart. Yeah. Bro, yeah. he, yeah. I, I mean, I'm getting chills. Like, yeah. this brother, he was head. so into, he was connected, yeah. and he was a proud Eritrean brother from Africa. He was a proud mm -hmm. brother from the hood. He was a proud Roman sixty. He was a proud uh, father figure, right. father and a big homie. He was a proud uh, husband. Exactly. I mean, the brother was he was all of that. So what it meant to us. Those of us who grew up in the Crip neighborhoods, mm -hmm. blood neighborhoods, those of us who grew up in impoverished neighborhoods and who can see a brother in this day and age, <laughs> get the bag, leave the hood, get the bag and come back to the hood. Back. Oh, wait, 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 bro. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you came back and then you use the money that you got to build up the hood. That is damn near unheard of yeah. to most people in this day and age. Right. Right. You gotta, you, you have to give honor where it is due. Right. It is far more than just this brother. He's a rapper. No, he was not just a rapper. He was a revolutionary. Facts. And yeah. we gotta understand that. Yeah. So it meant more to me being a brother from the hood who left my hood, went into Hollywood and was acting, been traveling the world, doing all this stuff, helping people for years. But I'm always back in my hood. I still live in Compton. Yeah. I ain't moving from Compton. I'll buy a property somewhere else. But it's like, no, why are you gonna leave it's the hard. hood? You think, you think what's happening here is not gonna happen somewhere else? Exactly. exactly. I can't escape racism. Right. Nowhere on this planet. I've been across. I've been to China. Well, they love us in China. Anybody. Yeah, yeah they do. They love, yeah. Oh, Especially because you you're tall. <laughs> the taller yeah. black man. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. I'm telling you. But it's like you yeah. can't escape this, so you need to go back to what made you as hard as you are. Right. And Absolutely. help your people there. Bring them up. Put them on so that we can change our own condition because ain't nobody else going to do it for us. Right. It's just that simple. So, no, man, he meant a lot more. The climate was beautiful. There wasn't one gang war. 
Wow. Since he passed. Wow. There has not been no major gang war. That whole week and a half, two weeks when everybody was coming to the Marathon store, mm-hmm. it was peaceful. Yeah. Enemy hoods who have been enemies for over 20 years right. was there with each other, lighting wow. the candles, holding one another, crying wow. with one another. Right. I'm, t- I'm telling you, man, blood's... Cri- I grew up around this stuff. Yeah, so to wow. see it was unbelievable. Right. It's like, how the hell? Hoover's, A-Trays, the sit, Yo, it, w- it was like a movie. Like, how the hell is this happening? Yeah. And wow. because of that... That told everybody across the planet, if they can get together as enemy hoods in L.A., yeah. we can absolutely end racism here. We can end bigotry here. We can stop this. We can change the world. We can come as one. We can we become one, brother, and fight as a human family. That's beautiful, man. Yes, sir. So I think that this message is very important. I hope that wasn't important. too much. Nah, no, that's that's we need. We, right. we hey, need it. We need for, it. Um, we, I, we, um, 